What's up guys gals, it's time for the latest chapter review for Kengen Omega. Kengen Omega chapter 255 entitled Otake Maru, which of course is the name of the sword that Ryan uses, uh, who showed up with last chapter and now is using in this chapter. Um, so, straight out of the gate, I thought about doing a reaction to this chapter, but it got a little late, I'm a little behind right now on things, so, but I wanted to try to get this out Wednesday because it was late uh, last week and stuff like that, so I wanted to try to get this one out. Um, so I read the chapter once I had some time in between work and stuff like that. And I thought to myself, I thought, you know what, how about I just quickly scan the chapter because I don't have a whole lot of time to, you know, come up with theories and I'm sure there's stuff going to be talked about in this chapter. I'll read the comment sections as evil as they are. I'll read some comment sections, you know, going forward after I've read the chapter and have a chance. But after reading the chapter and knowing how the community is of this series, I just have to say straight out of the gate, I like the chapter. So let's get that right out here in the first minute of the review. I like the chapter, okay? But I know there was a reason that I chose not to review, or, or to, when I did the review, to once I read the chapter, to not read the comment section. And I don't care what comment section you want to talk about. YouTube, Discord, Reddit, TikTok for God's sakes. I don't care where you want to go. Any social media platform, I can already tell you what people are going to complain about this chapter for, and that sounds like a them problem. Because what actually happened this chapter? Well, fan favorite Ryan came back. We like Ryan. Uh, he showed up with a sword, and last time I checked, there's not a single manga or anime fan who does not like swords. I've never met one in my life, and I don't know any self-respecting manga fan who has ever said, you know what would make that character cooler? If he didn't have a sword. Swords are lame. Never heard before in my life. Um, so he shows up with a sword and proceeds to kick ass in this chapter. So, I, me personally, that's the summary of the chapter. Is that not what happens? I, I haven't said anything wrong yet, right? So there was nothing to complain about. We did get some crazy expressions from Ryan. Like sometimes the art, once again, I don't think we're ever going to get that great golden Asura, you know, uh, fantastic art ever really again. Maybe a panel here, a page there. But at this point, I've learned to accept that it's going to have that sort of blurred, almost everything looks way too AIE digitally shaded look to it from now on um but given that ryan still had some crazy expressions the the fight was pretty quick but we knew we knew that willem's bodyguard guy was going to instantly be fodderized we knew that right out of the gate right so if anybody expected otherwise i did and how cool was that i want to say that too how cool was that i don't know if anybody's appreciating that yet because I, I, i'll go to the toxicity that is the kengan community after i've recorded a video right so i'm positive about kengan um but that was so cool that like all right so he's uh, the whole he's gonna dual wield they call him an idiot for doing that it's like listen that sword is way too long to dual wield effectively like one-handed wielding that no and and now you're using the scabbard and stuff and i'm like Okay, well, I've been re-watching some Inuyasha and stuff, trying to help with uh, how bad 2024 is. I'm regressing. I'm going back to my fan favorite stuff, right? So I'm watching the one of the best animes of all time, uh, Inuyasha. And he constantly, you know, uses the scabbard and stuff like that, you know, his sheath and stuff, uh, to fight and defend and stuff. And so I'm like, all right, so he doesn't have two swords, which is always badass as well. Um, but... He's using the sword and the, and the sheath to sort of block, attack, blunt, blunt force trauma, and then slice and dice, right? That's the intention. I'm like, all right, kind of cool, and I've seen it I've seen it done before. It's not like it's super, uh, super original, but it's not done as often as you would think. So I'm like, all right, that's, that's pretty cool and stuff. So he's going to try to hold them off with that while, you know, defend one while attacking with the other. Okay, cool, 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 cool. And that panel where he... Is like, oh, I'll get the knife, you know, because he immediately breaks Buddy's arm. Like, there's no contest. This guy, this Sean Wu dude, is nothing. He's fodder. He's shit. And then he slices from behind without even looking. You think you see a bead of sweat, you know, and if you are into One Piece power scaling, a bead of sweat means low tier every time. Just ask a One Piece power scaler. We see that bead of sweat as he's holding off Willem. 
uh, Sean shows up right behind. I got the knife, and I'm going to... Next page, expression has completely changed. There's no sweat drop. Ryan's just like, he didn't even look. He just... Whing, and he cut the dial... He's mutt. The dialogue bubble is cut in half along with the top half of... I love how it's not clean straight. Like, like it's not right here, like perfectly symmetrical, like right down the straight or right across here. No, no, no. It's like, you know... He took off seven eighths of his head, you know what I mean? He took off just a weird portion of it, but enough to kill him. Like, he sliced through some brain matter there. But he's dead, instant. Cut through the text bubble and everything. It was cool. What a cool shot. I'm going to try to use it for the thumbnail. Because what? without, you know, I'll have to somehow edit all the gorks. I'm pretty sure YouTube won't like that. But awesome shot. Love that panel. It looked awesome. Right? If nothing else, that was really cool, cutting the dialogue bubble and all that. It's always interesting to me. You know, when, uh, whenever mangakas try to go out of their way to utilize panels in an interesting way, or, you know, try to incorporate the dialogue bubble, or try just to do something a little more artistic and unique, not to the point where it's like, okay, you're just doing it for the sake of trying to do it, like, it doesn't make sense in the context, but, like, this, this, it was simplistic, but cool. He didn't have to do it, but it made it better, in my opinion. So, anyway, so he does that, uh, and then we have Willem be like, oh, so here's the secret to my strength. He goes 100%, he calls it something new. It's the removal, okay? He calls it, like, the woo version of it, like, gui yohan, or whatever it's called. Um, but it's removal, okay? He's using removal, he's got 100%. Apparently, he only learned 100% in the last year. So Willem finally learned, but I was under the impression, like, Okay, so one thing that I personally would complain about in this regard is that it seems like, okay, everyone, like, we didn't need that line. Like, can we not assume that the top tiers of all the Wu Clan can use 100%? I mean, you have Hollis and stuff, I, I, so I don't know. I just think, like, all right, so you can increase that number, but it seems like these guys all manage to always increase it. Everyone's able to go 100% now, so it's not as unique anymore, but that's what, that's what sort of happens. Um... But that being said, that's not going to be the egregious thing. The egregious thing is going to be that the secret to Willem's... Uh, oh, he's a little special. He's got something a little different up his sleeve is the fact that he's a Wu Clan member, so someone who can effectively use removal with the Superman Syndrome. Now, I just argued about the whole, ah, you know, it's a 100% uh, removal bargain sale, right? It's a Super Saiyan bargain sale with that, right? But, that being said, the Superman Syndrome thing, I'm like, you know, I don't know if I like this or not. So I'm not sure. I'm sure the community hates it. But I don't know if I like this as the secret. If anything else, I actually think it's not a bad concept. Someone with Superman Syndrome, which would be, you know, but, but someone obviously, they don't say at what rate. Like, Waka's got, like the perfected Superman syndrome, right? We don't know who, uh, like, we've already been told that uh, uh, Yan and uh, Zaiji there and stuff, they don't have it nearly to the level of Waka. They've got like a, ten a one-tenth version of it. Willem here, I forget exactly the number, but they don't have Waka's level of it. Waka's got the real deal. Willem, we don't know what level he's on like what scale is he higher or lower than one tenth is he up there to walk a level i would argue he's probably not walk a level um i would argue that he probably has it but it's another degree of it as far as i know that only includes four people and the concept of someone with superman syndrome pulling off 100 percent removal i mean yeah see i like the concept there and this is my one actual critique of the chapter. I like that concept in theory. On paper, that sounds, oh, there's no reason like match made in heaven. Let's stack abilities. This is Super Saiyan Blue. Let's Kaioken on top of it, right? That's what this is. And I'm like, okay, not a bad idea, but I just don't like it because the whole idea is, huh, Willem's a little special. According to Gilbert, right? Willem's a little different. Like, ah, he's a little unique or something like that. And his uniqueness is basically combining two things we've already heard about. And is it unique? Yes, I'm just not sure if I'm super crazy. I was, I guess, hoping to 
the the secret or the uniqueness to be something completely original to Willem. That being said, if he's going to die here to Ryan anyways in the next chapter or so, then it would suck to waste an original idea or concept on Willem if that's going to be the case too. So I'm going to table whether this is a great idea or not. As I said, I'm sort of you know playing, playing the scales on this one because one, I think the idea on paper sounds cool. Uh, you know, just like Kaioken Super Saiyan, right? Sounds cool. You're just stacking abilities we're already aware of. It's not an ass pull, really, because it's like, okay, yeah, we've only ever met four characters, if I remember that correctly, only four characters, and only one confirmed that actually has the whole thing properly in the entire series of all the monster martial artists of two manga series now, only four characters total have had Superman Syndrome. So, uh... That's not crazy. That's not crazy amount to me, so that doesn't bother me. Uh, but as I said, if it's that's the unique thing, eh, I, I don't know. So I'm playing both sides of that fence. We'll see what people say in the comments. Um, but yeah, he pulls that off. He says a hilarious line to me. He might be right though, because once again, he doesn't give us a number on the Superman syndrome. He doesn't say, "Hey, like, you know." I have Superman syndrome on par with Wakatsuki the Tiger or something. He just says he's got it. And then he goes 100% removal. We see him buff his ass up. And then he goes, I probably likely have the strongest muscles of anybody bar none. And I'm immediately thinking of Julius. And I'm going... Ah. Like, okay... Maybe, but no. You know, like, like I'm sort of the, of of that idea. You know, I'm like, do you actually have the hardest muscles of anyone? Well, once again, it depends on. You might have 100% removal, but how good is that 100% removal? You know what I mean? Because Ryan can do that. Ryan can do 100% removal. That doesn't mean that he he's got be better strength than Walker or Julius, right? And then on top of that, it's like, oh, but I have Superman syndrome. But we don't know to what degree. So does Yan, and so does uh, G. But they they were admitted that it's like it's it's Superman syndrome, but it's to uh, this degree. Here's the whole, you know, here's the vi levels. We're down here, right? It's a lesser version. We don't know where on the scale Willem's is. If if he actually has it on par with Waka, and he's using 100% removal. Then maybe, maybe there's an argument for that, but it just, it's sort of, as I said, this is the problem with the concept. On paper, sounds cool. We have removal mixed with Superman syndrome, but uh, in execution here, it's not handled the best. So I'm sure the community is making fun of this and stuff because we got guys like Julius. And yeah, he buffs himself up thinking he's going, uh, you know, another Dragon Ball Z reference, he's going uh, Ultra Saiyan, Ultra Super Saiyan. Uh, he's buffing himself up to, you know, slow down his speed and increase his mass and stuff like that. Is what it looks like. Veins popping out all over the place. So, you know, I, I think we'd have to have them both in a punching bag kind of Like, alright, alright, here's a mountain, here's a mountain. One punch each, who does more damage to the mountain? That's who's got the better muscles, right? Uh, <laughs> I think we're going to have to do something like that. But, um, either way, I would argue that it's... Obviously not the case by the end of the chapter, and also the page order is, to my knowledge, still screwed up. Uh, because I was very confused. I was like, did somebody forget to draw a sword? Like, when did he drop the... What, what is going on? This paneling is all over the place. Not realizing till later, uh, after rereading the chapter, is that, okay, this is clearly the end of the chapter. Because John's already dead, he's already in his removal state and stuff like that, and boom, he takes the hit and stuff. So... Um, and that's basically where that ends off. So after he kills Sean and then uh, Willem goes 100% removal mixed with the Superman syndrome and he's like, all right, I'll attack you and stuff. He's like, I'm nothing like all those people you defeated, Ryan. I am, you know, I am the epitome. I am the match made. Uh, I'm a genetic match made in heaven. And it's like, Ryan's like, cool story, bro. Boom. <laughs> and just, you know, completely gut shots him. And Willem seems to take quite a hefty amount of damage to that, alongside of the fact that a Koya me managed to get a one-up on him and bruise his face and stuff, and I'm sitting there like, listen man, I'm pretty, like, Ryan's really strong, and a Koya's not bad, once again, justice, 
right? I'm, I'm on the justice train. But, eh, you know? Like, I don't think if your muscles were so great, like, is it only your arms and legs? Because if your abdomen muscles were as good as you said, I'm pretty sure a, a quick punch by Ryan without going into removal, Julius or Walker's going to look down and go, uh, hmm, I felt it, but you didn't move me. You know what I mean? Like, uh, maybe I'm downplaying Ryan's power there a little bit uh, outside of removal form, but, eh, you know? Like, I don't know. I, I really don't think I'm buying that. I've got the strongest muscles. I think that's mostly bravado there. That's got to be bravado. Um, but, yeah, so... And the only other part, and that's the end of the chapter pretty much. The only other part I'm missing is we do jump back to Erio when he was dying and stuff like that. Basically telling Ryan to go get the O Takamaru blade. And saying that it's part of our Cure Clan thing. He's like, go master the blade and stuff like that. Granted, he he almost uses it as like a... T he uses it and then he purposely apparently let it go when it was hooked by the axe and stuff to get a shot. And he said... Nah, your feeding time's not yet, it's my turn, you know, sort of idea. And I'm just like, okay, um, well, technically, he did kill one person with the sword, you know, already. So maybe it's like, yeah, like, this is sort of the idea of two bloodthirsty, you know, the sword is bloodthirsty and he's bloodthirsty. So it's like, yeah, share, share the carnage, share the blood, you know what I mean? It's like, yeah, it's my turn, it, you know, it's my meal time. You, you wait your damn turn, sword. So... Once again, we've seen that sort of dynamic usually with possessed demonic swords in anime and stuff like that. Um, hell, even Skyrim with the Ebony Blade and stuff. It's in video games in anime. We've seen that kind of the bloodlusty sword, right? Uh, we've already seen that type of thing before. Uh, it works for me uh, totally fine. Once again, this the community will make fun of anybody using a weapon every day of the week regardless, but I don't. Swords are still cool. Swords have always been cool, and Kengen Omega cannot change that fact. If you add swords, swords are still cool. Um, but, yeah, so he does uh, remark on the fact that he needs this training. He needs to work on things. And, of course, Ryan didn't initially listen because, as we know, he obviously didn't go to these mountains because we saw him on this little, you know, hut on top of a mountain spear and all this stuff. Uh, after we are told the story of how he lost to the Wu faction, the Westward faction, all this shit, right? How he lost to the Westward faction, and that's where he goes. Because Eddie already said, go up there because you got to, you know, there's Howard Wu, who's nearly as strong as, or on par, or whatever he says, equal to um, Edward. And Ryan's like, old oh, man, did you not just see me kill Edward? And he's just like, and Eddie was like, yeah, but. <laughs> like, that was circumstances aside. We got, you know, we got other fish to fry. You're not ready. So go up there and master the damn sword. Ryan, of course, within character, didn't listen. Got his ass kicked by the guy who killed Howard. Because in the flashback, we saw Gilbert and Willem and all them behind uh, Ryan's defeat, supposedly. Which we still don't know the full details about. But behind his defeat. So then he took Eddie's word seriously. Went up to the mountain. Now he's back down uh, and kicking some ass. So I'm... As I said, I'm totally fine with the uh, with the chapter. I like the chapter. I'm totally fine with the explanation as to why he's using a sword. Eddie sent him up there, like master the blade. You know, okay, just add another weapon to your arsenal. Maybe it'll. Maybe it's something about it. Once again, maybe it's a demonic possessed sword. I don't know. We literally have two souls in one body cloning, and I don't know the Nico style. So for God's sakes, I'm pretty sure we can pull off. You know, <laughs> a, a, d a demon possessed sword, a blood crazy sword. I'm pretty sure we can pull that off in King. Um, but yeah, so, uh, and yeah, as we know, the fight for domination of the Westward faction between Howard and his flock and Gilbert and stuff was a really hefty battle. They both suffered heavy losses and stuff like that. Um, granted, Howard was killed by Gilbert, so Gilbert's even stronger. Uh, than Howard, implying that he was stronger than Edward, though, once again, we don't know how that battle exactly went down. Um, so, and once again, this is all on Edios and that Wu Clan leader uh, guy, I forget his name, uh, their discussion, obviously, with their intel basically being like, oh, Howard, his brother, he's, he's right up there with Edward. Um, maybe he was, maybe he wasn't, maybe that was just some, once again, that's hearsay, we don't know, but... Uh, either way, it implies that Gilbert's got to be around that level or better. So, yeah, you know, uh, it, it 
there's a lot to unpack, really, with that one. With the, with the whole flashback statement, there's a lot to talk about there as far as Ryan's character development, his growth, and his journey so far in Omega, which has mostly been off-screen, which I guess maybe a second critique, but that's a critique overall of the series, is uh, there's been a lot of just... Oh, by the way, here's what Ryan's been doing. Oh, by the way, here's what's been going on with this character. Oh, by the way, by the way, by the way, because we have a huge cast of characters and we're telling, not showing a lot, even for fan favorites like Ryan. So that's that's a bit of a critique of Omega overall. But for this chapter, I think it was done just fine. Ryan's back and kicking ass. I don't really have a problem. So, but what did you guys think? Let me know down in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And now I'm going to go subject myself two said comment sections of Kengen Omega and Kengen Forms and stuff like that and just see what people are bitching about. It should be a fun ride. It should be fun. So, uh, but thanks guys so much for watching. I could be completely mistaken and everyone loves this chapter and I'm not giving it enough praise. Entirely possible, but somehow I have faith that the Kengen community will not disappoint me with a bunch of really bad memes and toxicity. For some reason, I'm just using the old kidneys. Um, anyways, as I said, that's it for me, guys. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you back next time for chapter 256. And that's it for me. Have a good day. Happy Easter, by the way. Happy Easter to everyone who celebrates it and stuff. It's in a couple of days. So, happy Easter. Have a good one, everyone. See ya.